It's important that in the international community continue to pay attention of what's going on in Hong Kong because um, the erosion of freedom in Hong Kong is actually the reflection of uh, the aggressiveness and uh, the authoritarian expansion from mainland China and it will eventually put a risk on every single country in the world including democratic ones that we are living in. I'm Nathan Law, I'm an activist uh, from Hong Kong but now currently exiled in London. I still have to live a quite discreet life, even though I'm granted an asylum status in the UK. But I'm also worried about my personal safety. We all understand how extensive China's reach could be. There have been multiple cases about um, exile activists being harassed, intimidated or being assaulted by authoritarian regimes like the Chinese government. So um, for now, I'm, I'm just um, being very cautious and vigilant about my surroundings. I started activism when I was a student representation of my school student union. In the year that I was uh, the acting president of my student union, we had encountered the Umbrella Movement in 2014. In 2016, I then stepped into the arena of uh, electoral politics. I found a uh, demo sister with Joshua and the others. His main aim is fighting for autonomy for Hong Kong and democracy. We were involved in uh, the Legislative Council election in 2016 and that was the time I became the youngest uh, elected parliamentarian in Hong Kong at the age of 23. But subsequently, uh, Beijing seemed angry about the election results and after nine months of uh, being in office, uh, Beijing intervened in Hong Kong's uh, legislature legal system and created a legal loophole to evict legislators. I am among six of them who were evicted from the council. And one month after the disqualification, in August 2016, I was jailed. When the national security law was coming in 2020 June, I decided to flee Hong Kong because uh, if I were staying in Hong Kong, I would be locked in jail for decades possibly. The government criminalized the act of speaking out. Um, a lot of people who had merely voicing their opposition to the government, were arrested. So there has been a shift of responsibility of speaking up for Hong Kong to the people overseas or the exiled activist. To stay or to leave is an extremely difficult question. It really depends on whether you have certain recognition and profile to allow you to be able to speak up for Hong Kong and to be recognized by the international community and policymakers that your voice matter. A lot of my friends, my colleagues who I work with in Demosisto, they're already in jail. So um, it's devastating to see your friends and fellows to be put in that position. There is no time for me to be sad or to grieve or whatsoever. All the works that I'm doing in London, I hope that it paved me a way home. You could just imagine the only condition that I could go home is I'm prepared for decades of imprisonment or Hong Kong becomes a free and democratic place. So I guess the best chance for me is to continue to fight for democracy for Hong Kong and to be the face and to be the voice of it.